Looks like it's working. Wow. Come on, baby. Facebook Live. Looks like it's supposed to be live. It should be us, should be there. It's live, first time ever, congratulations. All right, now I'm coming back to my, my Zoom screen. Look at that, it's live. Okay, good afternoon. And it's only one, it's one o'clock and one minute. Welcome to Trauma Transformation 208. Identity and Purpose Unite. That's our title today. And I am so excited to be sharing this with you. If you see me glancing over, it's because I have my notes right here. Now, this whole series is about trauma. And one of the things I think is always important when we're having conversations is to talk about uh, what we really mean, to define our terms. I've been talking, I've been using my own definition here. Trauma is when overwhelming things happen in our lives. It can be an episode, it can be an incident, or it could be a season of those things, a whole pattern or a phase of overwhelm that comes in and takes over every aspect of our lives, our mind, our body and spirit are overwhelmed. That's my simple definition of trauma. Now this week, I came across another definition that I wanted to share with you today because maybe you'll see it as a more professional one. Um, trauma occurs when an external threat, and I'm going to say we determine that threat based on our own lives. A something that the threat to me may not be a threat to you, all right? Trauma occurs when an external threat overwhelms a person's internal and external positive coping resources. In other words, the strengths that you have of your own, but also any resources that you may have around you. When those are uh, uh, overwhelmed, I like it because it has that word in it, that's what trauma is. That comes from bloom and fall it. Bloom is a psychiatrist, Follett is a psychologist. And that was a quote, you know, a definition they came up with in 2009. They're, they're specialists in trauma. So it's really not too far off from my little homemade definition. And that makes me really happy. <laughs> so what I've been doing in this trauma transformation series is reviewing the work of Bessel van der Kolk. And he's the author of the book titled your body keeps the score. He's a Dutchman who lives in Boston and has created, he spent his whole career working on trauma researching. He has a place in, in Boston called the Trauma Research Center. And what I've got, done is gone into his work and pulled out the seven areas that he has identified that are specifically affected by trauma. We began with predictability, we talked about mobility, connection, numbing, and spacing out is how he defined it. I'm going to redefine that, I think, the next time I go through this material. Time and sequence and safety. Now, this week, we're talking about uh, identity and purpose. And to be honest, Bessel, I listened to two different talks on this very topic, and he didn't address very much about this particular area at all. But all along, he's been talking about, uh, and, and, and I have been following it in my presentations here too, about the importance of each area, how each area is impacted by trauma, and also strategies or ways to be able to meet that challenge. Now, the result, I want to give you another word that I want to define today. This is a word I don't believe I've used it all along. It's very key. Uh, it's resilience. Resilience. And resilience is the ability to thrive, 
to thrive in your identity and purpose, no matter what the stress is, no matter what the trauma is. In other words, that we're able to keep our balance no matter what's going on around us. That is resilience. And you'll notice, actually, I partly from Vanderkark, but I've added a little bit in there too. But he relates it directly to identity and purpose. Now, this is where the transformation piece comes in because that's what happens. We have that trauma experience where we're completely overwhelmed, losing our balance, everything's beyond what we can cope with, where we develop resilience and we're able to keep our balance when those things hit. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about that uh, because it's what, the transformation is what a lot of people uh, relate to me in a physical transformation. And I, I think I shared this once before, but it's worth repeating. This was me before in my, my trauma. Now I have a smile on my face and I was busy doing things. I'm sure that I was useful and productive, but that was me. And this is me in my transformation. And that thread that has taken me from really from survive, from the, the survive phase of my life into where I am now, where I'm thriving. And that's a transformation is a really great word. And I want to relate it back to Romans chapter 12, the book of Romans in scripture, uh, chapter 12, the first two verses, where uh, it says, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to, it goes on, then you'll be able to sort out God's will for you. So there, there you have it. There, there is the, the description of transformation and what people see on the outside, although it it really did come at the forefront of this process in my life is only an illustration of all that's been going on and continues to go on on the inside. That's really why I'm here. Because, oh, my name is Sandra Helen Lovelace, in case this is your first time in, in seeing these. And by experience of trauma and living in the transformation piece of that, that's actually what I do is I share the transformation journey and the framework that I've learned as I inform, and there's the trans transformation of the mind, you know, for move forward by the mind, by informing, affirming, and inspiring women to come out of that trap of trauma and walk in the freedom of our unique, our unique design and purpose. That's, that's what I do. And did you notice there, there's a little connection and let's, let's pick another portion of scripture. The reference is Ephesians chapter two, verse 10, Ephesians two ten. It's another one of my very favorite verses because it says we are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus, you know, Jesus created the world, so he's our, you know, specific aspect of the Godhead that created us then, but also created in Christ Jesus as we come to him as our savior and walk, walk in his ways. And all right, so we're a masterpiece created in Christ Jesus. There's the design with a purpose designed in advance for us to enjoy. So, Scripture really supports, I found that rather interesting, Beth Selvandercock's connection of identity and purpose. And it, it rounds it out and gives us a foundation and strength for this transformation journey from trauma into resilience. I want to share a little bit of, uh, more about that now. First of all, Bessel's 
sharing on this topic, as I mentioned, it wasn't, he didn't go into a lot of depth here, uh, but he did mention that uh, the pandemic, he, he described this pandemic, I don't really like the word, but the health crisis that we're living in right now as a pre-traumatic condition. Uh, and that there are no experts for how it's going to play out or anything. And, and okay, that's, that's really great. <laughs> but in that, he only gave one strategy. With his, he gave lots of strategies, several things for all of the other areas. But for this area, the only thing he said was that we should do activities that affirm who we are. Who we are. In both of the times that I listened to his talk, that's all that he said. So the rest of all of that stuff is from me. Now, through this series, uh, Vanderkuck and I, both of us, talked about all the way through um, that we need to be aware of ourselves, our self. And he would have termed it uh, knowing what's going on inside, how we're feeling, what we're thinking, how we're responding or reacting to different things. And, and that is important. That is important. And, and I've talked about it as well. And then it talked about, he calls it agency. In other words, the ability to do something. He mentioned it in two or three of the other areas. It, it applies here as well, though he, he didn't say it, but it it does, it applies here as well. And the ability to do something that we believe that we can is absolutely vital because it, it speaks to the ability to have influence, to uh, be able to accomplish something. As a person, it shows that we're useful. It gives us value. And so do you see how those two things really dovetail again with scripture? Now, whatever impact, because their identity and purpose are so closely related, whatever impacts one is going to impact the other. So when we talked about mobility, not being able to go anywhere, the fact that we were confined didn't only affect that, can't go to work, can't go to the gym, that, that was really upsetting to me, but it also affected our identity. My inability to keep my body in tip top shape is more than just being able to walk around. It's identity to me. I, I, I can't imagine what would happen if I, if I couldn't move. I, I mean, in other words, I work out not just for fitness or weight, it's because my knees uh, in order to keep keep them moving. All right, so there's the impact of, uh, so one impacts the other, whatever happens to our value and purpose, and that gets right to the core of who we are. That's where I want to talk now. And I'm going to begin this, this edge up with a little bit of my journey here, I've, I've implied earlier that I would get to some things and I think today's the, today is the day to share. So in my own walk, I have followed some of the things that I shared also early on here, the, the strengths, you know, the situations, the signals, and the source to find out the signals we're feeling in our bodies, in our minds, in our hearts, our spirits, and to figure out, you know, where that's coming from, what's the situation that prompted it, that triggered it, and then go behind that for the source. And I have done that. I've also done the SWOC, which some people know as the SWOT evaluation, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats is what normally is, but I don't like the word threat. So I put challenges in there. I have, I have done that as well. So the things I suggest are what I have walked through to get where I am doing all those things in God's presence, you know, under his hand and with, with prayer and, and in scripture and so on. And I've discovered some things now 
Bessel talks about our genetics and our history. And I, I've known, you know, my parents were alcoholics. They were raving, violent alcoholics. And I, that's the house that I grew up in. And, and there was abuse there. Now, not the kind of abuse that normally comes to people's minds. I was, I was neglected, seriously, as an infant, abandoned in my crib. And uh, research lately has shown that the impact of being neglected is the same uh, brain and chemical response as if you had physical injuries. So that, I've come to understand that's my background of genetics. Bess, uh, Vanderkoek also talks about our history. And my history is I was raised by parents, I was born tail end of the war, uh, parents who were, grew up in the depression. And so that way of life, waste not, want not, that was how I grew up. And I also lived during the polio epidemic and all that mindset that came in. I mentioned that earlier, so I won't, I won't repeat that. And uh, adverse childhood experiences, the ACE score. When I look at that form, yes. Uh, and other threads ongoing in my life, it's not a surprise I've been diagnosed with PTSD or C PTSD, as some would say. Now, now look, when we look at these various things, the impact, now I'm talking to you now as if it's another person, but that's my life. And I used to think, well, you know, my parents were alcoholics, but that was them, not me. But research now shows that actually those kinds of things are passed on gener generationally. Uh, let me just share this really quickly. I'm uh, trying to be careful of your time. Uh, researchers back in 2013 did a study with mice and they took male mice and exposed them to the aroma, the fragrance of cherry blossoms. Except every time they spread the aroma of cherry blossoms in, they did a mild, I noticed that word in the, in the research, a mild electric shock. So once that was, you know, given into the males, of course, they reacted to the shock. Then two weeks later, they bred those mice. And the next generation, males, the males were bred. I, you know, there's an old thing that people say, oh, well, they have a, a white patch. I have an uncle. They have a white patch in his hair. Oh, because his mother got scared by something. I don't know. Well. That's a joke, supposedly. But the scientists discovered that the children of these male mice reacted just the same as if there had been an electric shock whenever the cherry blossom fragrance came into, the, into their space. So there is a transfer of these things that we have lived. And I don't even know all that went on before I was born. I mean, I, I could make, take some guesses, but really these, have, these things have an impact on our lives and we shouldn't just ignore them. And we should take the time to discover them. Not living our whole lives looking in the rear view mirror, but, and maybe you're thinking of some things for yourself already and, and you're thinking, oh, I have this and I have that. Oh no. And when I look at these things, it would be easy enough for me. And I have had that down in the mouth, like, oh no, look what I have to cope with. Oh dear. But really what it does is it underscores the necessity for us to know ourselves and also to do that in the, to discover ourselves, taking all of that to God, doing everything the same as I did have done my framework and continue to pursue it in his presence. So being unaware of all that stuff for a lifetime was a shock, but I have, you see, I have had a turnaround and it began with truth. It began with the truth that God has a plan. 
It began with the truth that God doesn't waste anything. It began with the truth that my skills, not things necessarily I've even learned in this life, but the basic, my strength of character, God put that in there. And my ability to reason and think the way that I do, God put that in there. Those things are all part of what he's given. And desires, my desires to care for other people, these things have all been put in there by God. And so now to begin to rebuild, to, to move away from those coping skills that haven't done me any good and have actually been unproductive in my life anyway, maybe even counterproductive, to be building this resilience on my transformation journey. That's, that's what I'm all about. To meditate on the word of God, specific scriptures, posting them, repeating them, say out loud, being in worship so that I'm completely mind, body, and spirit involved in God's presence to build the resilience, to also um, work at getting a better balance, which is what's happening for me. The things that used to throw me back long-term are not doing that anymore. Now, also self-care. Right now, God has me on a self-care chapter, which I call God care. Let me just give you a few examples of some things for it, as Vandercook says, activities that reflect who I am, who we are, who I am. Here's some for you, for, for you as illustrations. This doesn't mean to choose my areas for yourself, all right? One is my home, my environment. It, I didn't realize till I was in the middle of the process, it's the first time in my life I've just been able to do that for me. And I have, for example, I have a big, heavy-duty, dark wood sleigh bed in my bedroom. And it's the one I wanted, and it's very practical. It has two drawers at the bottom that I use all the time. It's great. Not just for storage. I use them. And I have these nifty little night tables that are turquoise. And they have this modern scroll work on the front with mirrors behind them that, because there's a door. You can open the door. So there's the practical side of me still there. You can put stuff in there and shut the door. Can't see all the mess. That's me. Here's another one. Uh, last week, I, I thought about it, this self-care chapter, as I was saying, and I thought, what do I, what really would make, what, what would help me? What would feed me? I want to go for a picnic. Yeah, but not just all the places I've been. I want to go for a picnic by a pond. And I asked a friend, she gave me a suggestion, and I had a wonderful time. I went to Legacy Park in downtown Greenville. It was really quiet and out of the way. Believe it or not, it was. That was great. Here's another one. Meals have taken on a whole new look for me in the last three years. Ever since I served a meal to a friend. <laughs> Uh, who was coming out of a difficult situation. And I was doing this and doing that to make it interesting and for her. I used my nicer plates instead of paper plates. And I, I put a little plate in the middle with some snacky things for kind of like a dessert. And I sat down and I, this little whisper, I think it was Holy Spirit, Sandra, is there a reason you're not doing that for yourself? And it's, my life's been changed. You'll see those examples on Facebook. All right, one last one, one last one. And that is my evenings on the deck. And that is reflected also in, you can find me on Facebook, by the way, at Sandra Allen Lovelace. That's where my, my page is. My personal profile is Sandra A. Lovelace. So you can find me over there and you'll see meal pictures. And I get a lot of response to the evening on the deck ones, right? You know, I stay up late enough. And so I have white uh, lights, fairy lights, I call them fairy lights. And I usually light a candle as well. I've come to learn that's, that's been true. That's been allowing me to peace, to have peace. And I just realized at a self-care conference that I went to last week online that uh, candles can be very soothing to people. So that's me. It reflects me. It reflects who I am. So now it's up to you to figure out what's going on with you. 
<laughs> how will what what in your life will move you into resilience all right i want you to know that this is actually our final session in this series about trauma and i wasn't sure if i was going to do one more about tying things up but this this week when i put this together i realized this really does pull a lot of threads together a lot of topics and points that were made all along uh, by talking about our identity and our purpose it's such a key central issue core core issue really and so i've decided to just we'll stop this one here now look if you've missed some if you're just coming in now and you wonder what the heck were all those other ones about you can find out those sessions over on my youtube channel sandra allen lovelace over on youtube also you can find out more about me at my website i actually mentor and coach women on the transformation journey i do one-on-one -on -one. i haven't haven't been asked to do any groups yet but maybe maybe that will happen but you can find me at uh, find out that information over at sandraallenlovelace.com and go to my mentor page and find out more about my specific qualifications and the kinds of things I do and what people are saying about me over there. Now, you can also reach out to me personally, and I'm happy for you to do that at Sandra Allen Lovelace at gmail.com. That's a, a great way, you know, email is a, a great way to just hone in. I guess you could send personal messages over on my Facebook pages too. But now look, I want to don't don't run away because I have something special I'm going to I'm going to offer in in terms of my mentor, all right? But before I before I I offer that very special treat, I just want to give you your call to action. Here's your call to action, all right? Whatever comments you have, positive ones or correction something you're wondering about that didn't sound quite right that's okay or a question certainly the material that i've presented today could easily bring up questions please make sure to write those things in the comment sections below uh and your name i could have said that at the beginning huh your name and where you're from just so i know who is here today that would be so wonderful also a recommendation you can go to my page if this series if you if you have been here and the series has been helpful recommendations are always nice some people might not know or haven't watched this whole thing and they don't know enough about me you could help them here's the biggest one for you to do and that is i'm pretty sure i'm going to be doing another series and so if whatever you're thinking of oh i'd like to know about this or i'd really like to know about that I will consider your topic. Put that in the comments as well. All right, the time is really almost up. I try to be punctual to start and to end, although I did run over once. So here's my special treat. I have decided that June is the month where you know we come out of spring and head right into summer. And it's a great transformation month. So I'm offering free, for free, for no cost, a personal consultation. A personal consultation for possibly working together. You could talk and share about where you are and the ideas you have about where you might like to go or where you are and where I might think you might wanna be pushing, start pushing some boundaries uh, to leave the world behind and, and walk in the freedom of who God made you to be and the purpose he has for you. So, but it's tricky now. I'm going to give you 20 minutes free for 20 weekdays. So the weekdays for the rest of the month of June, we're all taking weekends off. That's part of my self-care plan. So you can have it too. 20 minutes free with me at, for the next 20 weekdays all the rest of the 20 days of the week in the month of June. So jot that down. I gave you my contact information already and you can do that. Okay. Thank you very much. And we're done.
Bye bye. I don't think I pressed record. <laughs> I didn't press record, did I, Donna? <laughs> did you think of it? Oh, Ludovine, you can unmute you, my, um, the record is off because I never turned it on. Oh. I was so excited. I was so excited that I got Facebook Live to work that I didn't. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay, it's okay. We're not gonna cry because in my mind, it's over on Facebook Live and I'll just save it there. <laughs> Donna, you're not mute, you're not, you're still muted. Somebody's, there's a buzzing sound somebody has. Yeah, I hear that, but it's not here. Okay. Is it you, Donna? Uh, Debbie? No. I don't, I don't know. Oh, it's still live. Stop.